previously. I recently got a good deal on this totaled 2021 Mazda CX-5 from Copart. This car was deemed as a total loss due to being blasted in the passenger side front corner where all of the components from that area got shoved clear up to the strut tower and after a quick inspection I got it strapped down and headed back home. After getting it off the trailer, first order of business was to get all of the damaged components stripped off because you generally find more damage behind all of the visibly damaged panels. This car was dead in the water, it just wouldn't start and I figured it probably had something to do with all of those busted wires that I saw once I removed the front bumper reinforcement. So I went ahead and got them all reconnected and tidied up, after which as you probably guessed already, car came back to life. Then I used this heavy duty tie down strap to pull some of the smashed up metal back out and that's when I found out that the ABS unit along with a passenger side motor mount were toast. I've also noticed some damage on this frame rail bracket and that led me to believe that we may have some frame damage. With the help of a laser I was able to take some measurements and sure enough my suspicions were confirmed. Both of the frame rails actually ended up moving over and on top of that I also was able to determine that the passenger side strut tower also had moved over. That means that today is the day we do framework. First thing first, let's go ahead and get this car mounted on a frame rack. And for those of you who are new to this channel, I actually built this frame rack some time ago, so if you want to see how I did it, I will leave a link to that video in the video description down below. Here I am attaching the deck of the frame rack to the pinch welds of the car. Alright, now the car is fully secured to the rack. If you watched the previous video, then you'll recall that I had to raise one of the sides of the car to get the car leveled out. Now I'm gonna have to do the same thing, only this time I will place the jack directly under the frame rack base. And with the car leveled out side to side one more time, I'm going to quickly refer back to our previous video. Alright, let's take a look at our measurements. I want to look at this line right here, basically from this spot to this spot. So this spot actually designated as letter J, so if we're going down here to J, it shows us that we gotta look at the upper bolt hole. Not the little uh, elongated hole above it, but the one over. So back to the chart, that's gonna be the upper inner bolt holes on both of the frame rails and we should be at 875 millimeters. Thing to keep in mind is all of the measurements provided are meant to be measured from the center of a hole to center of a hole. But you can't always hold one end of the tape to the center while measuring out because it's not very comfortable and it's also impractical. So the thing you can do is you can just go from the edge of the hole to the far edge of the hole. You're basically taking that measurement and just shifting it over a couple of millimeters but you are still getting the same measurement. So I'm going from the right edge of the hole to the right edge of the hole. And here I'm just using a magnet to hold the tape measure in place just to free up one of my hands. And our J measurement is 86 0.6, meaning we are at 866 millimeters, when we should be at 875 millimeters. And to figure out what's going on here, let's do this. Let's take this 875 and divide it in half. 437 and a half. That means that with our laser set up, where it's splitting the car exactly down the middle, in theory if the frame rails did not move at all, then the laser beam should be landing right on that 437 and a half millimeter mark. So in this instance, since I am not measuring from one hole to another, where I can go edge of the hole to edge of the hole, now I'll be measuring from the hole to the laser beam. And that means that now I do have to measure from the center of a hole. So here I am right at about a center. And if I'm off by half a millimeter, it's not a huge deal. So from the center of a hole out to the laser beam, we are at 422 millimeters. But we should be at 437 and a half. That means that we're about 15 millimeters over this way with this rail. Now let's go ahead and see how much this rail had moved. And on this side, once again from the center out to the beam, we are at 444 millimeters. That means that this frame rail is over that way by about, you know, seven or eight millimeters or about a quarter of an inch. So now we know that both of these frame rails had shifted over. One last quick thing I gotta do before I start pulling on the frame is to disconnect the subframe from the frame rails because that will take any kind of tension 
off of the frame rails and at the same time it's gonna allow me to pull these uh, frame rails separately one by one because right now they are connected together through the subframe. Interesting thing to note here is watch what happens to the frame rail once I loosen up that bolt. As I'm taking the tension off of it this frame rail moves and the same thing happens to the other frame rail. Now I can roll in the pulling tower and get it all attached by pounding in the wedge to lock it in place. Then rotate it into the spot to make our frame rail pull. I'm thinking to make the pull, I'm gonna use this sill hook. I'll just snake it right in here and uh, that should be okay. But I don't wanna bend the slip on this uh, mating surface. Therefore, I'm gonna slip in a, you know, it's probably a quarter inch thickness piece of metal right in there and now as i'll be making the pool i'm actually going to be pushing right on this steel plate which will in turn going to be pushing the entire side of this frame rail so one more time let's take a notice right now we are at 445 millimeters and we need to be at 437 and a half so basically we're going to make seven to eight millimeter pull so right now we're about 435. However, if I were to just relieve the pressure, the frame rail will jump right back and we're going to be right back at our 445 millimeter mark. That means that we have to over pull. All right, so that was our first pull and right now the chain is free. There's no tension on it at all. So after making the first pull, we have gained five millimeters, but we still got about two to three millimeters to go. So let's make another pull. Okay, no tension on the chain, and we are at exactly 437 and a half millimeters. This frame rail is back where it's supposed to be. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Before I'm gonna start pulling this frame rail back, first thing I wanna do is I wanna pull this uh, plate forward. It has to be nice and flush, just like this side. It's nice and flat. So I'm going to address this first because if I don't, once I bring this frame rail back to where it's supposed to be, and then if I'll start making the pull on this plate, the frame rail may spring back a little bit and I would have to re-pull it back again. And this is just some extra work that I simply don't want to do. Top part of the plate is starting to take back its shape. So now I'll move to the lower part of the plate. All right, so after a couple of quick pulls and few blows of a hammer, this is what we got. The straight edge is nice and flush all the way up. Now let's pull the rail sideways. Once again, the little plate goes in. So we are all set up and ready to pull. And once again, let's go ahead and uh, check and see where the laser falls. A little hard to see, but we are right at 426 millimeters. And again, our target number is 437 and a half. So we gotta pull it about 11 to 12 millimeters. Right now, I have it over pulled by seven or eight millimeters. And we're looking right at 445 millimeter mark. Relieve some more tension with a hammer. With the chain fully relaxed with no tension, Right now, after the first pull, we are right at 432 and a half millimeters. Five more millimeters to go. So from the center of a hole, out to the beam, we are at, let's see, where is it? 437 and a half. Oh, there it is. Right on the money. So frame rails are back where they're supposed to be in relation to the laser beam. But let's go ahead and take that measurement between these holes to see, are we actually going to get that 875 millimeters? So from the edge of the hole to the edge of the hole, 875 right on the dot. With the frame rails being pulled back into spec, the next step would be for us to address the strut tower. So in order to figure out where the strut tower should be, I can use my schematics here, or I can just use the other undamaged strut tower as a point of reference. So the very first thing I wanna check is, I wanna see if this strut tower is sitting higher or lower in relation to that strut tower. And since we already have this car leveled out, I can just go ahead and jump right in. So I got my green, more powerful laser set up vertically right now. So it's splitting the car in half down the middle. But I do have my less powerful red laser 
set up in such a way where it's hitting my horizontals. In a last video, while I was taking some preliminary measurements, I've determined that there was one millimeter discrepancy between the damaged side strut tower and the undamaged side. And I wanna show you something interesting. So if we look at a strut tower bolt, you can see that the laser beam is hitting that very top thread on the bolt. And if I move to the driver side, we observe the same exact thing. Once I got this passenger side frame rail pulled back into spec, this uh, strut tower checked out perfectly. So as of now, I know that the strut tower is good up or down. It's exactly where it's supposed to be. Since all of this metal got shoved from front to back, now I'm wondering, did the force of the impact cause the strut tower to move toward the firewall? Well, let's take a quick measurement and we'll have our answer. For that, I'm going to use my tram gauge. I will drop one pin on a spot that drawn on that piece of masking tape on an A-pillar and the other pin will drop on a forward-facing bolt on the strut tower. Now, if you're not sure what that piece of masking tape is doing on an A-pillar, watch the previous video on this build and it'll all make sense. Okay, gauge is set. Let's move to the other side. Perfect. The measurements are 100% the same side to side. So now I know for a fact that the position of a strut tower is right where it's supposed to be, up or down and also front to back. And also while probing around just a little more, I went ahead and removed this bolt that connects a driver side strut tower to a strut tower brace. And if you look, then you'll see that the strut tower bolt hole is sitting exactly in the center of the brace hole. But on a damaged side, We can see that the strut tower is sitting quite a ways in and, and this brace even got dimpled and got bent a little just right on that corner because the strut tower got slammed into that brace. So I'm gonna measure from the center of the strut tower bolt and the beam is landing right on 589 millimeters. But if I measure from the damaged tower bolt, the beam is landing on 583 millimeters. So that means that the strut tower got pushed over that way by about five to six millimeters. There is yet another area in question, so I will take one more quick measurement. Now I could probably look around and find some sort of measurements for that area, but I have something better. I have some replacement panels here. So this long panel is the one that goes right in here. Then that guy down there is the panel up here. And then I got this entire strut tower panel. Basically, yeah, it's the whole thing that connects all the way up to the firewall. So I am gonna be replacing those two, but I am not going to be replacing the strut tower because it is fine for most part. It's not that damaged. I just gotta do a little bit of pulling and I may borrow just this element from this whole panel. And this element runs up to this seam right here because it is kind of mangled up up through here. And since I have the strut tower, I can use it to take some measurements off of. So from the hole in this bracket out to the beginning of this other hole, we are at 317 millimeters. We got this seam right here and everything past that seam is damaged. It's all smushed up, but everything past the seam this way is looking nice. I'm pretty sure that the space between this wall and back here is probably a little bit smaller because this element got pushed inward. And you know what? Let's go ahead and take a quick measurement. I am measuring out from that same hole on the same bracket. Looks like we're at a 30 centimeter, five millimeter mark or 305 millimeters. And that means that this area got shortened by 12 millimeters or roughly half an inch. So this way I'm not guessing whenever I'm making my pull, I get all of the metal pulled back out to its original dimensions. And this way, as I'm putting this car back together after it gets repaired, all of the gaps will line up just fine. And I'm not gonna have anything funky going on because all of my dimensions and measurements will be on point. This motor mount is bolted into an apron that flows right into the strut tower. So if this area is gonna get pulled back out, it's best to get that motor mount out of the way. So once that motor mount is disconnected, this motor will sag. And in order for that not to happen, I got this motor supported just by a small hydraulic ram that's connected to this hand pump. Got a piece of wood in between it and oil pan. And just to be clear, I am not raising this motor by the oil pan. All I'm doing is just supporting it while one of the motor mounts is disconnected. Man, this thing broke just about everywhere. One spot, two, and three. So basically this motor mount wasn't even attached to the chassis because all of the chassis mounting points are broken off. So now I'm gonna reposition the pulling tower to get it in line in the direction of the pull that I'm going to make. Throw a blanket over the chain for some added safety and watch the metal move. Oh, 
All right, so this got stretched out quite a bit. I mean, it still looks like garbage. It's still all smushed in, but I mainly just wanted to relieve some of the tension that was still all concentrated in this corner. And just to kind of get an idea as to how hard or easy this metal is going to move. All right, let's trim off some of this fat. Now let's drill out some of the spot welds and start removing some of these damaged panels. After making that forward pull, I was able to open up that slightly collapsed cavity of the uh, strut tower. So as you recall, the spacing between this hole and uh, you know this bracket back here wasn't as long as it, what it should have been because this panel got shoved that way. But after making that pull and you know taking some measurements, I think we're good. So once again, going to our new part. So it doesn't really matter what I uh, measure from. I can use this hole right here. I can use this hole right here. So yeah, for example, Let's go ahead and use this hole. 315 millimeters. So if I go to that same hole and over here we get 315 millimeters. So that means that this area right here is far enough out. And the very last thing that we got to do in this vicinity is we got to pull the strut tower back to basically get these holes in the center of this uh, strut tower brace. And to pull on the strut tower, there are specialty strut tower pulling clamps. They're expensive, I don't have one. I can hook onto the strut tower with a pulling clamp. And it's something normal you wouldn't do because once you hook on with the clamp, these teeth will leave the impressions just like that. That will disturb the paint and basically make it look like there's been some work done in this area so later on you're gonna have to rework all of this and get it repainted just to get this panel looking good again but since this panel is pretty destroyed it doesn't really matter because i am going to be replacing it anyway so i am going to be doing a clamp and i'll just hook onto this edge right here and make my pull some more stress relieving and tower springs back into its original position. All right, so all of my pulls on the strut tower are done. I got a total of three pulls because I did not want to over pull it. So you know what? I made one slight pull, then I released and the strut tower went right back. So then I pulled a little farther out and then I watched how far the strut tower sprung back. But I could tell that I still needed to go another three millimeters or so. So then I went ahead and over pulled that much more. And this is the result. Our bolt holes are now in the center of the strut brace. Visually looking at the bolt holes is one thing, but you still have to measure things out with the tape. So once again, 589 millimeters this way. And from the damaged side, 589 millimeters. Everything checked out down to a millimeter. I couldn't be happier. So once you get done with all of your frame pulling, you wanna make sure that none of the components ended up moving because sometimes when you're pulling up there, something may shift down here or vice versa. Therefore, it's a good practice to double check all of your work once all of the pulls are done. Checking the strut tower height for the last time. And the laser beam is hitting at the very first thread right above the nut on the side that we just pulled. And moving on to the other side. It's hitting the very first thread once again right above the nut. Distance between the frame rails stayed the same. Also making sure that the frame rails are sitting in level in relation to each other. So on the first rail, the beam is hitting the very top of the thread inside of a bolt hole. And second rail, the very top of the thread. 
So what do you guys think about the way I do my framework? Would you do anything differently? I would really like to get some feedback. So all of the framework is done and everything turned out great. And at this point, I'm that much closer to getting this car done. In the next video, I'm going to extract the rest of those damaged, chewed up panels and I will get the new panels in just perfectly once again with the use of a laser. Because one thing that you do get with a laser is precision. And when all of the components are precisely placed on a vehicle, then your final assembly is just a breeze. You barely need to adjust anything. Everything just goes together and fits like a hand in glove. I will also get that leading edge of the door pulled out. We'll get the door skin all metal worked, bundled up and in primer, and basically we'll get everything ready for paint. I would also appreciate if you hit that like button. And with that being said, this is all I got for today. And I will catch all of you on the next one.